Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, where wealth strategies and pop culture collide. Featuring your distinguished host and certified financial planner, Bart Zandbergen. Welcome to our show of dream chasers and wealth makers. We are thrilled to be back in the studio today with a new episode of the Zanbergen Report. I'm proud to bring in the movers, shakers, and difference makers who are passionate about sharing what they have learned and what you need to know today. Tish Burbaum, my business partner. Tish, welcome back again. Thank you so much for having me, Bart. Sure. I am so excited that you've agreed to talk about the new Secure Act 2.0 and the five ways it's going to impact our clients. You know, um, challenge accepted. So behind closed doors, you were like three people are going to want to listen to the show because it's it can be kind of boring going over changes, but I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you. And I'm going to say that I like saving money. I like growing money. I like protecting money. And these are all tools in our toolbox. So this are like, this should be the number one rated show because if you apply these, you can either be saving money, making money, growing your money. Why wouldn't you want to listen to this show? Which right? is perfectly the, the perfect answer as to why you're going to go over all the five points. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love it. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay. so five ways to cure act 2.0 it may impact us and our random question. What does secure stand for? Secure act. You, no, you're you're just nuts. Just not being nice. No, no. Securing a strong retirement act. Beautiful. Secure. 2022, 2.0. All right, Are carry on. Carry on. Okay. I feel like this is a challenge accepted conversation. Okay. So let's just, let's have fun. We can talk about what this looks like. We don't have to talk about all the changes. There's quite a few. Oh, we're let's going have... over every one in exact detail. Oh my gosh. If you're listening, this is what I deal with every day. It is so much fun. This is so fun. This is how we banter. Okay, so number one, investors will be able to save more on long term for retirement. Oh, whoa. wait for it. What is wait that? for it? Wait for it. Bart, how is this going to help you? That's not nice. <laughs> I'm not even close to RMDs. Jeez. Okay, you knew exactly what I was thinking. But because you're mean, that's why. Oh, I'm so not mean. Okay, so no, this is really good. So those of you out there that are like, okay, RMDs require minimum distribution. So in retirement accounts, the IRS says at some point in time, you have to start taking money out of your account that you've been deferring, putting um, and letting grow. And at a certain period of time, you have to start taking money out of that account. And so they have now changed that to a new age to 72 and so that'll be um also they're going to be now raising it to the age of 73 in the beginning of 2023 which is right now it was 70 and a half so you can see that they're incrementally making this longer for you to have your money grow and then it'll increase again to age 75 in 2033 so i'll be able to participate in that Wow. <laughs> All right. So let's be, let's clarify. You said take from your okay. account. Let's make sure we clarify that these are qualified accounts, IRAs, 401ks, et cetera, just so that we're on. Yeah. And I use the word retirement. I think that's what just people identify it as, but Bart, you're absolutely correct. So they're qualified accounts. And uh, it doesn't mean you have to take all of it. They have a specific formula, which is the minimum that you have to take out of that um, retirement or qualified account. And then they, um, it's calculated annually for you, each account specifically. Tell me about the catch up provision. The cool thing that secure act is doing for that. You're killing me. Okay. So the catch up position catch up is allowing individuals that are 50 or older to provide, um, maximum savings in retirement age. And this is really not that much money, by the way, out so of the big scheme of things. It's a $1,000 catch up, but the, the difference is now that they'll be able to add increments of, um, of basically, $100 a year beginning 2024. 
Remember in tax planning, it's not the big things. It's a combination of all the little things. Okay. Well, that's perfect. Cause this one didn't excite me, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, like you said, it all adds up. And so savings does add up over time. So in, in 2025, and I don't know if we want to keep on telling them like no, in the future years, I feel like we just know in 2025, it's going to continue to go up again. So yeah. again, over time, they're building this into over time, you continue to invest and let your money grow over time in these different tools they have in place. So really what this means, if you are in your late 60s or early 70s, the catch up contribution and the RMDs are the two that specifically that you want to be participating like being aware of and learning that that is going to help you with your strategy going forward. And then I would suggest if you're not already knowing what those are, reach out to your advisor and they can help you specifically on what that looks like with your plan and making sure that you're being as tax effective as possible. Okay. Number two, are you ready for number two? Do it. Roth tax treatment is more it's it's better than ever and i can can i just say uh oh i know you're going to i was just talking about the difference between a traditional um retirement account and a roth retirement account and there's different ways that you can invest in a roth so i was general with that statement but traditionally if you're younger the advantage of a roth means you're paying taxes in the beginning and then letting that money grow over time. And then you take when you take the money out, it's you've already paid the taxes. So it's tax free versus a, a, a traditional retirement allows you to put the money in and you defer paying taxes and you let that money grow over time. And then you pull that money out. And then when you do, you have to, you know, depending on when potentially have that RMD. So I'm kind of wrapping it all together, but you pay the taxes when you pull the money out. So that being said, traditionally, a lot of times people, if you can, when you're younger and you're just investing, this is a great thing for you to explore and to look at and see if you can participate in. And um, there's a lot of other scenarios that it makes sense to to add to that. So, um, you know, anyway, I think a good takeaway for this is that they've, they've enhanced. So your retirement, your 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 company sponsored retirement plans have more Roth options. That's an easy takeaway. Yep. And then also, um, I'm very excited to see. Actually, I really I'm I'm very excited. I'm not being sarcastic. Um, that both Simples and SEPs IRAs have had do have Roth options added now. Yeah. And I'm going to give you something for your storytelling on Roths. It's something I've used for years. Oh, and love it. It is. Would you rather pay tax on the seed or on the crop? Oh. So if you're a farmer and you buy a bag of seed, it's pretty small, right? You get a 10 pound bag of seed. You pay tax yeah. on the 10 pound bag of seed. Yeah. That 10 pound bag of seed may produce tons of crop of whatever. And now you've just paid, instead of paying tax on all the crop that it produces, you only pay tax on the bag of seed. Anyway, thank you very much. Make sure you tip your waiters on the way out. <laughs> I think it's great. That's a good example. A lot of times it confuses a lot of people, but so that's a fantastic story. That's a takeaway from this tip from this show is the difference between a Roth and a traditional is your seed in your crop. When you want to, when do you want to be taxed? Um, so that being said is like you said, a lot of new plans for the retirement now have access to have Roth, which is great. And, um, and then anything else specifically you want me to say on this one? So um, there's no more lifetime RMD requirements for employer plans for Roth accounts. That used to be a big thing for people in the past because they were required to make some changes and maybe make some think about if they wanted to do a rollover and they had a little bit more planning associated with it. So they kind of took that rule away, which I think is great for everyone. And they just made it more complicated. So that was perfect. And it'll help people going forward. And then, um, 
And then a Roth treatment is required for some catch up contributions. So this and it all kind of goes back to how much money you earn in your earned income. Right, right. Let's roll into number three. Okay. This is a good one for company startups. Yeah, so I love it. So we hear a lot of startups and especially right now, if you're a new company and everything is changing in the landscape and you want to offer employee benefits, a lot of times people add retirement plans to their employee benefits to retain their employees, to make them excited and make them want to feel like they're contributing towards their retirement. Well, now retirement plans for startup plans and the cost, they're allowing a credit up to $5,000 for three years for the cost of setting up a SEP or a simple or, or a qualified plan. So um, like what Bart said in the beginning, this is just another tool that you have in your toolbox. And it's also the ability for you to kind of offset some of those costs of getting it all started and kind of going um, and being able to provide for your employees and, and giving that benefit to them. So this one I think is huge for the employers, the people that are starting the companies and wanting to provide something they get a, they get a nice um, deduction or some type of um, credit. Right, right. It's a real encouragement, obviously, um, uh, for small companies, small to medium sized companies to implement plans. So we'll give them a, an A on that one. Yeah, right. It's good. Yeah. It's good. And number four is pretty interesting, right? When you and I had read this when it first came out, I think there's some, some good planning opportunities here. Yeah. Uh, and that is the ability to roll your 529 funds to a Roth rollover. Love that. Because what, we're, what have we been faced with for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years? If you don't use your 529 assets, it's going to get taxed and penalized. Yeah. So, now, so, again, let me state it. Now, there are some details, but they're they're easily met. Um, whatever's for monies that are left in a 529, yep. instead of having to distribute and pay whatever tax and possible penalty, you can roll it into the beneficiary's Roth IRA. I think that's so beautiful. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And this is a fantastic tool. So a lot of times this might be like, this is for someone, maybe it's a higher net worth income and they might not be able to contribute to Roths. This is a fantastic way to continue and be able to, to support or help the next generation being able to have retirement as well and being able to contribute and not lose that money that they were saving towards education. So, which is cool. Yeah, I really like that. I think that's my favorite, that's my favorite. I like it. I like it. And you know, I like number five. That's one of my best points because it is what is not part of the Secure 2.0 Act. So Why don't you tell us about that, Bart? Oh, you're going to turn the tables on me? All right. Just when it's your favorite. It is my favorite. Okay. So this has not been affected by Secure Act 2.0. Conversions to a Roth IRA from a traditional IRA. That remains the same. And there's a number of bullets here. All of them require a lot of explanation and detail. If one of these tickles your fancy, reach out to us and we'll give you more information. So first yep. one, conversions to Roth IRA from traditional, not affected. Backdoor Roth IRA conversions. I yes. think most of the public doesn't know what that is. Um, we've used it very successfully as a planning tool for our clients who didn't normally qualify for a Roth IRA. Reach out if you have any questions on that. Uh, number three, the age at which QCDs, qualified charitable distributions, are permitted. So it remains at 70 and a half. The point there mm -hmm. is that has not changed. We have clients that are successfully sending money, their RMD distributions directly to a charity of their choice and not paying any tax. Uh, the, so number four, the types of investments that can be purchased with retirement funds, that hasn't changed. And then finally, the 10-year rule for inherited IRAs, which was implemented under the original SECURE Act 1.0. So those are things that have not changed. We did it. Which is, we, which we did is it. good. Which is, I know, I know. But I, I wanted to like just go back to some of the things that didn't change because some of those tools and tips are things that people, if 
those are new to you, you've never even heard of those concepts, you should definitely reach out to your advisor because there's strategies that um, might be a great fit or might not be a great fit. So if you don't know, I feel like this is a good opportunity if you're still listening to us on our very informative show today. <laughs> this is a good one to, to reach if, out. If your advisor doesn't know, Tish would love to answer your questions. I can give you her mobile phone. She loves answering questions at 3 a.m. So you feel free to call or text her at 3 and she will answer any questions that you have. And if you don't get me at 3, you can wait 45 minutes and you can reach Bart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else, Tish? I would say that if you made it through our show to listen to the Secure Act 2.0, good for you. And if you did not, I'm sure that we're going to have the summary in the link that you can look at. And then worst case scenario, print it out, bring it in and be like, okay, Tish, what do I do? We'll also send it out. We're going to send it out in our newsletter. And if you're not receiving our newsletter, you can also message us and we'll put you on our newsletter list. Yeah. All right. I'm going to close That's this out. Right. Go ahead, Bart. I want to thank everyone who has tuned in. We had a, had fun today on the show discussing Secure Act 2.0. Look forward to being back in the studio again next week. Cheers. Tune in next week for the latest edition of the Zanbergen Report, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Catch up on our recent shows by visiting podcast.bartzanbergen.com. The Zanbergen Report is also available on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Interested in being a featured guest on our show or have a question you'd like to hear us answer? Email podcast at bartzanbergen.com. The contents of this podcast episode do not constitute an offer of securities or a solicitation of an offer to buy securities and may not be relied upon in making an investment decision related to any investment offering Access Wealth Management LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Access does not warrant the accuracy or completeness of the information contained herein. Opinions are our current opinions and are subject to change without notice. Prices, quotes, rates are subject to change without notice. Generally, investments are not FDIC insured, not bank guaranteed and may lose value.